Hey guys, so today should be the last day of corn planting 2020. I just got a little bit of acres here. My brother's got a half pivot to do, but he's gonna do that by himself because it's a lot easier to finish out on seed when you're by yourself instead of judging for two people. But what I'm gonna do is when I get done with this, we're gonna switch over to beans up here because we got a few bean fields in the area. Let's start rolling right into beans, hopefully. And... Well, <clears throat> this is gonna be the last pass for plant corn 2020 for me. Looks like I'm hitting about right. Shouldn't have too much to clean out of there. So right now, I'm taking all these units out. And what I mean by units are being the meters. These are the corn meters. They come in here. There's kind of some whiskers here that we gotta readjust for beans. They're actually gonna go all the way down. And then we gotta replace this strip here. It's gonna go to a smooth one. This one's kinda got some grippies on it. I don't know what you'd call it, but the other ones we're putting on there is gonna be smooth. This is the brush. For you guys that haven't seen the channel before, this is what takes the seed down to the trench instead of just dropping it down a seed tube. The reason why we changed these units here is because you'll notice on these, every other hole is plugged. What's well, causing corn, we usually plant anywhere from 30, roughly 30,000 plants per acre. But when we go to soybeans, we're going to plant roughly 150 to 170,000 plants per acre. And so the difference between a corn meter that's got every hole, every other hole plugged, versus a bean one, is every hole's open. So this will allow it to plant a higher population. But also, when you change these, see they'll just plop on there when I'm done, but I still gotta change this strip here. When I change these though, everything's gonna be a different calibration because we're gonna be planned faster. I'll actually tell the computer inside what meter we're using, and then that'll know It'll give it the right calculations in order for it to plant the right prescription or, or population that we want to drop. So that's what I'm going to do here anyway. Um, if you want to see it, I did it last year too. Video, I actually did it in the same spot. We kind of did the, ended up doing the same thing this year. I'm going to switch over, knock out the fields up here and go from there. So if you want to go maybe more in depth, I did a video like that last year. So you can go look at that one if you want. What's going on today? What are we doing? We going to plant some beans? We sign language in today? All right. What are we pulling? See, <laughs> is it fair Tom gets the little seed tender and I gotta pull the big tender and I got a little pickup? Sometimes it's just how it rolls, ain't it? Who's that? He's gonna beat us up there? We better not let that happen, huh? Does our tractor look better than his? Yeah, it looks totally better, don't it? Not twins at all. New day, guys. We got about an inch of rain all over last night, so we won't be planning today or even maybe tomorrow or I don't know how long, but we'll see how it goes. But I'm not needing my tanks anymore, at least the stuff inside, so I may work up the courage to just take them off now. But what I want to do now is the other day, so we tried out a different uh, fertilizer the other day for our soybeans. We put it in the tanks. It's called soy green. It's an iron. And what it's supposed to do is sometimes if you get fields with um, light soils or something, there'll be spots out there that get, I think what's called iron chlorosis. And the beans won't grow very much. They'll just kind of stay stunted and yellow. And so some of those spots we tried putting on this stuff to see if it actually helps. We tried that out. The only problem is it looks like blood in your tanks, but luckily the rain kind of washed off the sides of my tank. But what I want to do is my red balls, you can see it almost probably looks black on your screen, but it's, it looks like blood pretty much going through the system and you can't really even see your red ball. So I want to get that flushed out for sure. And then if I feel ambitious, I'll take off these tanks. But another problem I had too is last night, I was planting beans and my row number one is getting blocked 
in the tube somehow and it's up in there somewhere so I'm gonna have to drain out that tank it's about half full to see if what's blocking row number one for some reason it's doing it so my brother have had something happen in the past where like a tag flew out didn't know it and found it later he, he had to do the same thing but that was on his old 24 row I think so but I'm gonna fart around with this Think, bud. Yeah. How's it looking? Did you find one? There's one there. Right here. Yeah. Guys, we might be a hair deep on these, huh? Yeah. Little buddy. Yep. We're gonna pick them up, okay? How are we gonna do that? We're moving the seat up. Or we're making it shallower. So we're gonna go up a half a hole. You wanna dig? Yeah. Okay, you can dig. We're gonna go four and five. We're showing. Oh, you found a worm. That's cool. Nice. Looks like we got good moisture after that rain. Let's go from the side, see how it looks. You can see that old stock decaying there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See that? You can see them showing up there. Look at all those nice little seeds. It's amazing is how well those exact emerges, even though that's a little close. Okay. Leave him in his home, the dirt's his home. Got that nice decomposing yeah. no-till root. Mm -hmm. Just giving the soil food. Let's go, looks good. No tanks, nicer. So in case you were wondering why we started that 3208 cat, is to move this pivot out of the way. It's another hydraulically driven pivot, TNL, just uses as a pump. Moving it. Is it beef jerky time, Garrett? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's peppered. Glad you noticed. So what do you guys want to know about beans, other than if you can figure out a bean, you can probably figure out a woman. Meaning that some years, you can do everything right, and she'll still be mad at you. The years you feel like, well, you screwed up and messed up, and she'll give you, she'll still cook you supper at night. Beans are tough to kind of figure out that way, and uh, you kind of know the general things of what it likes and don't like, but at the same time, it's all kind of, there may be a little more environmentally challenge than maybe even corn is now I know a lot of guys are planting early beans earlier now and uh, some are showing results and some aren't whoever I talked to last year we had a great bean year if we're not one of our best bean years and we got them planted late I don't know it's just one of those things the environment speaks to each other right I guess I don't know all we do is what I try to do is get them when I'm planting them is getting them about an inch and a half deep uh, just making sure I'm getting on good soil to seed contact uh, we've always planted corn first and beans later and uh, I've gotten along fine that way not to say it can't be the other way around so uh, that's what we're doing now anyway 
We get done with this field, Garrett? Yeah. Looks like he's gonna head out. We better take you back to the Jeep though, huh? Folding up. I'll videotape him. Beautiful show. things I'm hoping to do this year I kind of been testing lower populations with soybeans it's just I've never really labeled it well clearly so the yield monitors can pick it out better and what I mean by that is I can look at population maps and kind of guess but it doesn't pull it up like a variety map would so this year I'm actually naming them kind of like in my earlier video when I name a hybrid I put the the number and then the rate I've been planting them at just so when I go through and harvest them It'll pull out that like it is a variety and tell us what it's yielding. So when it comes to that different variety and that different um, seed population on these trials I've been doing, it should pull it up easily for the yield map to separate it. And so hopefully I can uh, kind of get, kind of zero in on, you know, what populations might be better for soybeans and things like that. Typically what we do for populations on soybeans on our farm we're running around that 160,000 uh, beans per acre we used to years ago run 185 plus just because the reason why we used to run more i, I don't think um, the seed treatments were as good also we just didn't have the germination and some of it is we just weren't able to tell you know we we're just kind of going out there and and somewhat guessing you know kind of where we needed to be um, but now with technology, you can kind of zero in on that stuff a lot better and just see what we can really get away with or can't get away with. What I want to do with this is I'm dropping 160,000 and then right beside, you know, a strip of, well, I always get interrupted. Go ahead. Anyway, I know I can't remember where I was at. But no, we, we typically run 160,000 on our farm. And yeah, just now I'm kind of filling in where I've been. There's been a few fields where we've even gone over 200,000 back in the day. I mean, I'm talking, you know, over 10 years ago and stuff like that, but I think bean seed has been getting better. Seed treatment's been getting better. You know, um, even just these planters. For some of you older guys, remember I actually started out with the bean cups. And so you remember how accurate those were. They are basically a glorified hand dropping them down the seed tube. Didn't have those very long, and then we got the bead meters in the old 7100s, and those were a lot better. I mean, they actually kind of can singulate them a little bit. No, it'll be interesting to see what, you know, these trials have done. I've, I've watched a lot of guys, you know, how low they can go. Um, one of the guys, uh, Marion Calmer, does a lot of low population tests, or he has anyway in the past low population tests with soybeans and you know he's gotten away with I think 75,000 plants per uh, acre um, but I think he's kind of recommends around that 100,000 so that's kind of what I'm dropping so what I'm gonna do with this is doesn't mean I'm gonna drop to a hundred thousand next year but what it does do is if there's no yield loss whatsoever it'll make me a little bit more comfortable maybe maybe bumping that population down to 150 140 and just kind of keep working it down year by year just to kind of see it doing different trials because i got some cows i want to run to Berman. every year it don't matter i'm out of seed no oh, and then you can ride to that pasture with me and we'll dump them out and then we'll come home Anyway, every year is different, so I, it's not like I'm going to drop it to 100 or we're going to drop it to 100,000. We got to kind of visually see what's going on and just kind of figure out where we need to be. I guess when we actually see the numbers come in later this year. Old nursery along Highway 40. We'll see where it goes. I like those sunsets. Think back now. I don't think I mentioned why there's kind of a delay, but we had, I believe on the Thursday or Friday, we had about a 50 hundreds rain, I think it was Friday, and then 
was it on Sunday or Saturday night we had another inch in the area and they're all nice general garden shower rains and so um, we got the corn done and that was perfect for what it needed and we actually got you know a couple fields done of beans also and so getting that rain was just nice it's really amazing these high-speed planters even with beans going 10 mile an hour singulation on them and you think, oh, it's just lying to us, it's just telling us to do that. You go out there and it's like, bing, 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 with those beams. That brush just makes the ticket for the singulation on that. Not that it's greatly important on uh, soybeans, but might as well do the best you can. Cattle side of the operation is getting ready to haul cows to the pasture. Kind of make myself scarce. So we had to... Small little shower go through last night, kind of delayed our start this morning, but I got some more seed, he's got some more seed, and Brother Tom said it's able to go, so I think we'll give it another try here. But we got more chances of rain tonight, so. But we got a different hybrid that's gonna go on a field just across this creek over here. But I got a little bit left on, so I'm gonna run it out and then head over there. The seeds on my pickup over there. Run it up. It's just a smaller 40, 50 acre field, so it shouldn't take too long. Packer wheel not spinning very good. Bearings out. I'll have to go back to my pickup and change it. So you gotta park it for optimal YouTube camera angle, which I have no idea is. Another thing I'm kind of trying out this year on one row is these are a different type of closing wheel versus these. I'll tell you kind of why in the tractor, but these are all poly. To the pokey wheel, um, so far I've kind of liked it a little bit better than the, the round wheels just because it kind of crumbles that sidewall a little bit. We've tried spike cast closing wheels years ago and it was just too aggressive it would actually kind of dig and it was just too much for our soil conditions but this one where it's poly and it's plastic it isn't quite so aggressive um, so far i kind of like it uh whether or not we actually do anything next year on it i don't know we'll just see how it does i don't want to brag too much but my wife made these cookies they got like kit kats in them and like a cake mix to keep them nice and gooey I wish you could taste this. Starting to get the drips again around here. It's pretty wet, but it's poking it in the ground. Right there, right next to an earthworm. This ground's maybe a little bit more Sticky, gumboy than some others in some spots. It's definitely moist, but it's sticking it in the ground pretty good and covering it up. With corn, I'd be a little more concerned. Beans, not as much. Before I take off from this video, um, I just kind of wanted to mention a few things about the food supply right now, for those of you who may not know. But right now, the Packers are kind of the bottleneck right now for everything um, getting through. A lot of them work in close proximity to each other and so they're kind of experiencing a lot of things going on, uh, sicknesses through there it seems like. But I'm really glad Trump uh, did an executive order to keep those open because that's the biggest thing we can keep moving right now. I know um, safety is a concern and everything like that but that's a huge issue right now is just being able to keep that food flowing through the process. Because right now things are getting backed up at the suppliers to the, to the uh, uh, packing plants. 
a, you can't stop an animal from growing or at least for very long they're doing all they can um, especially with the hogs and and cattle aren't quite they're a little more flexible with the cattle but i know hogs they have more cycles that come through and so uh, just stopping that is, is almost next to impossible hopefully everything starts to kick back up so we can get the production going through and another issue that's been going on for a long time though it's always kind of a thing that's been lingering is um, the spread in margin between what the livestock producer and what the packers get has been really wide. The packers have been sitting on a large margin, um, large margin, large margin, <laughs> uh, versus from what like the cattle producers and, and hog producers get. And so that's kind of been an issue going on in the background as well. Hopefully uh, we can bring that to the forefront to, once things kind of open up and start flowing that you know, there's a little bit more price equality going along the supply chain there because from what the consumer pays, from what the producer gets, it's a huge spread. And I couldn't tell you all the numbers. I'm not a livestock producer. I'm not all that. But I, I know this much is that spread is really huge. And uh, things need to be done about that as well. But that's something coming down the line. We just need to get things going now and get the food through the process. So that's kind of an update what's going on through kind of that food chain anyway. And so... Hopefully they can figure out ways to keep those packing plants humming. That way we don't get backed up with um, livestock. And also keeping the corn, it's just a huge uh, ripple. You know, anything could happen. Just like ethanol is kind of a concern for us corn producers right now. That shut down, um, you know, and if you get livestock producers that, that can't take corn or anything, that shuts us down. And so then we just kind of got a big backup along the whole supply chain. So, uh those are some of the concerns that we're dealing with now, but hopefully things start opening up and get going. And I, you know, guys, I think we just need to get it open and, and kind of keep things flowing and as safely as possible, of course. And, and another big thing too is this process is going to be different for everybody individually, just on a, a personal level. You know, some people are going to be slow to come out of their, their, uh, their quarantine and some people are just going to hit the gate running. We need to be con um, considerate of everybody. I know everybody's going to have their different individual take on everything. Uh, we need to do this together, uh, look out for each other, and just be considerate and understand that everybody's going to come out of this at their own pace. What do you think? Should we call this video a wrap, bud? Yep. <laughs> yeah? What do you think? You want to say like and subscribe? Like and subscribe. <laughs> All right. We kind of got rained out there. A little heavy squall came get, through and just finished us off. So we'll call how, it good. How you get rain? How you get this bigger, Dad? It doesn't grow. Thanks, guys. We'll check you later.